Nitrous oxide, or N2O, is often used in sports cars, rockets, and even buses. Nitrous oxide provides additional power for such vehicles by providing more oxygen for combustion. When the vehicle is burning a hydrocarbon, N2O breaks apart due to the intense heat in an exothermic reaction, which, firstly, provides a few hundred extra kilojoules to greater the horsepower, and secondly, provides more oxygen to fuel the combustion reaction. Compared to the normal 21% oxygen saturation in the atmosphere, combustion under nitrous oxide raises the oxygen saturation to 33%. Depending on the car machineries and the amount of N2O injected, the car could gain from 75 to 300 horsepower. Although there are certain positive aspects to nitrous oxide usage, the byproducts of burning it, however, is detrimental to the environment. Here is a short clip of burning nitrous oxide. It is called the barking dog test, which indicates the presence of N2O. Notice the tube after the reaction. The first colorless tube became a yellowish brown. This is because the burning of nitrous oxide produces NO2 gas as a byproduct. NO2 is yellowish brown in color. On a day of higher API in Hong Kong, NO2 could even be visible as a dizzying brown haze on the streets. Inhaling excess NO2 could cause headaches and dizziness as a short-term effect, but it is also carcinogenic. The main concern of NO2 is that it contaminates water sources. When water comes in contact with NO2, a chemical reaction occurs, producing nitric acid, which lowers the pH of the water source. The lowered pH might cause acid rains, erosion, and loss of flora life. The conducted experiment is to show the relationship between NO2 gas and the acidity of water. The group hypothesized that if the amount of NO2 gas is increased, then the acidity of water would also increase. This is a diagram showing the experiment. Firstly, iron is reacted with nitric acid. The NO2 produced is bubbled through a tube into 40 ml of water which then reacts and becomes a nitric acid solution. The solution is then titrated, giving us the molarity and pH. The following items were used in this experiment. Two hot plates, an Erlenmeyer flask, one molar nitric acid, 0.1 molar NaOH, iron fillings, distilled water, 940 ml beakers, rubber stopper with rubber tube, as well as titration equipment such as burette and dinofiri. First, the beakers were rinsed out with water and then individually filled with 40 ml of distilled water. Then, the Erlenmeyer flask was filled with nitric acid and then placed on the hot plate. The heat from the hot plate is to intensify the gas pressure within the flask. The increased collisions would push the NO2 gas out quicker. The 40 ml of distilled water was then placed on another hot plate. By increasing the temperature, the reaction rate also increases, so that more nitric acid will form when it comes in contact with NO2. When everything was hot enough, iron fillings were inserted into the Erlenmeyer flask, which was then immediately stoppered with a rubber stopper. NO2 gas then came pouring out of the other side of the tube. Some of this gas dissolved in the water and became nitric acid. Three sets of experiments were done, each with a different time period. These periods differed from 1 minute, 3 minutes, and 5 minutes. In other words, more amount of NO2 gas flow was allowed for the 5 minute trials compared to the 1 minute trials. Based on the hypothesis, the 5-minute trials should have a higher H plus concentration than that of 1-minute trials. Each trial was repeated three times to ensure accuracy in the data. Additional nitric acid and iron fillings were added to resupply the reaction whenever the gas flow seemed low. This is so that NO2 gas would come out from the tube at the same rate for each trial. Meanwhile, the barrette was rinsed with NaOH and then set up over a clamp and ring sand to prepare for titration. There was first a one minute test trial to ensure that everything was working as planned. A limus paper was used and the resulting solution did turn out to be acidic. Each trial was timed carefully. The one, three, and five minute trials were separated so they wouldn't get mixed up. 
Then began the titration process. First, a few drops of phenolphthalein was added into each solution. Then the beakers were placed under the burette and NaOH was slowly added by one member, while the solution is continuously stirred by another member. When the solution turns pink, it indicates that all the H ions had reacted with the OH ions from the NaOH. The volume of NaOH added is recorded, and from this data, the molarity and pH of each solution could be derived. From the recorded data, two outliers were eliminated. The first outlier is trial 1 of the 1 minute trial. A volume of 17.3 ml of NaOH was used for the trial 1 solution. It is way too high compared to the other trials of 8 ml and 7.3 ml. At first, the water was set to 70 degrees Celsius. After trial 1, however, the group noticed a significant amount of water that evaporated. Therefore, the temperature was lowered to 50 degrees. Also, the high temperature made it hard for group members to handle the beakers. Dude, make this less hot. Make this less hot. The higher temperature might have caused the faster reaction rate, which allowed more nitric acid to be produced in the solution. The second outlier comes from the second 5-minute trial. Only 2.5 ml of NaOH was used to titrate the solution. That's not it, right? The reason to this is that insufficient amounts of reactants were present. This is evident because the group observed a low output of NO2 gas from the tube. Also, no additional reactants were added for this trial. After the removal of the outliers, these are the results. The graphs of the results agree with the hypothesis. The increase of NO2 gas would directly increase the acidity of water. As you can see here on the graph, the two variables have a directly proportional relationship with the other. And here is a graph of the decrease in pH. The pH is at the lowest at the 5 minute mark and the highest at the 1 minute mark. This shows that the higher amount of NO2 gas that has come in contact with water results in a higher acidity in the solution. Overall, the experiment was successful because the retrieved data is in agreement to the address hypothesis. However, more trials could have been conducted so that the data with eliminated outliers would be more accurate. The use of nitrous oxide does bring harm to the environment because it contaminates water sources by lowering its pH. The more nitrous oxide used would result in more NO2 gas produced, which would directly increase the acidity of natural water sources. Although nitrous oxides might bring certain benefits to vehicles, the negative effects of it to the environment is still inevitable.